so good news for all you Reaper users out there is that version 5 is about to bust. It's coming. So Justin, tell us about what's new in version 5 and uh, yeah, let's start with that. Uh, well, something that people have requested is VCA groups. The ability to group uh, tracks to each other, which, which uh, Reaper already does, but in this instance having the volume of one track affects the volume of other tracks. You can have tracks be multiple members of multiple groups and tracks be masters to multiple groups as well. Uh, and you can then apply the, the volume information from one track to another and, and the pan as well. Uh, we've in improved the video support in, uh, in Reaper substantially, so you can, uh, it's better in pretty much every way, but you can actually now use Reaper as a video editor, and we have uh, a user scriptable uh, video effects processing language. We're not becoming a video editor, but having these capabilities is, is interesting as, as video becomes better and better, uh, yeah. and, uh, and also people do a lot of uh, you know, scoring to uh, to film and to TV, so it's it's good to have these these capabilities. That yeah, sounds like a great feature. Uh, obviously, being able to integrate video and audio and, and actually get creative uh, with it is better. If you have it all in one environment, that's that's going to be a real benefit. The other things that we've added are VST3 support, which uh, is, is a nice thing. Uh, it's a more modern API, so in theory, uh, plugins should be more compatible. Uh, people are still using VSTs from the late 90s, which some, some of these uh, you know, can cause issues. Uh, also, it supports sample accurate automation, which is nice. Uh, we've also added that uh, sample accurate automation support to our own uh, sort of built-in scriptable plugins, uh, just to, for parity. We've uh, improved the ability to have take effects on uh, so on individual items in Reaper. You can put effects processing. Okay. And this is not a new feature, but uh, now you can automate them and, and use uh, parameter modulation on them as well, which is something that uh, we only supported before on track effects, but now it's uh, sort of just rounding out the feature set there. We've uh, been working on a new theme, and uh, it has a bunch of new layouts. So, uh, for example, if you want your tracks to be larger, or uh, like larger for on a tablet, uh, mm -hmm. you support that, or smaller so you can cram more on the screen, um, all sorts of things in between there. So right. Well, well I, think that, I think that makes a huge difference. An upgrade in the way the information is presented visually in a DAW will make a difference to its users, which is an interesting thing, right? Do you, do you think about that? Does DAW, do, does, the, does DAW use promote looking at your music, which many people have an issue with? Well, I think uh, whether or not it does, I think the thing that you end up looking at all day when you're working on making material that probably does have an effect on what, what it is you produce. You were talking about the status of the DAW market in 2004-2005 when, when Reaper was new. Flash forward to now, 2015, has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? I, I think it has gotten better. I think um, you know, the, the price of DAWs like Logic have gone down. I mean, that's probably due to Apple more than, more than anything having a lot of money. But, um, but Pro Tools now you can run with third-party hardware. Um, things have gotten better, I would, I would definitely say, uh, in, in every way, every metric. The way you described Kakos to me was a company that wants to produce the best of things without being uh, concerned about the bottom line, basically, about business deals and that type of thing. What happens when a company can operate like that? So we haven't grown, which is kind of counter to the way most companies run. Most companies run and they want to grow and they want to do more things and spend more money so that they can earn more money to do more things. And so there's this ex expectation of growth and we haven't done that, largely because I don't personally want to have to deal with more people and telling people what to do, which I'm terrible at doing, and managing people and just doing all these jobs that are not really about what we're doing. So I've always tried to keep things as small and as simple as possible. And, and as a result, uh, it, it's a viable business. Do you think that's part of what makes Reaper different? What, I know you set out for it to be different. What, what really stands out for you in that respect? I think there are sort of three big, big things. The first is that it's, uh, it's a lot more modern than a lot of DAWs. Um, it was started 
you know, decades after some of them. Um, so we've had the ability of, or the advantage of, of having a lot more processing power and a lot more resources uh, on, on the computers that are running it. So there's that. Um, the other thing, two things I would say are that we are not motivated at all by, uh, by money, really. Mm -hmm. uh, we we want to have money, we want to have enough money so that we can pay for things and so that we can provide this, this DAW to our users. But we're never going to add copy protection, we're never going to do things that would ultimately compromise the user experience. You know, if, if you have to use a dongle with your software, it's a compromise. It's a compromise for the user. The user is, at some point, inevitably, is going to be inconvenienced by that. And sometimes that inconvenience is a, is a big deal. Uh, if you're using it for a live show, it's a big deal uh, to have one more thing that can go wrong. Um, and the third thing is that we've always been focused on making Reaper um, extensible and configurable. So um, early on we made it themable so that you could customize the appearance. Uh, we now have made it very scriptable so you can write scripts to do, uh, to do more advanced things that we haven't actually programmed Reaper to do. So uh, users can write scripts in Python and Lua and uh, another scripting language of our own so that if they want to manipulate projects and envelopes, they can do that. Um, if they want to uh, create macros, simple things, they can do that very easily without even programming, just by you know, dragging and dropping different actions together. So on, on all these different levels, we've given the ability to the user to go and customize it to, to their heart's content, content. Having said that, you don't need to. I don't really do that. I use it as it is. and. Uh, and it's great, uh, but for the people who really want to, to make it something of their own, they can. Right, so people can get under the hood with Reaper and just go.